Terry Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. Hey, I pray that as you invest in yourself today, you're captivated and you're catapulted to live your dreams. In fact, if you've never subscribed to this podcast, just push the little red button right there to get consistent teaching tools and tips to help you live your dreams. Today, I want to talk to you about how to use the law of attraction for weight loss. The law of attraction for weight loss. You know, this podcast is specifically on the weight loss issue, but honestly, it can be applied to whatever battle you're facing. Are you fighting a financial battle, a legal battle, a health battle, a marital battle, whatever it is? The law of attraction is simply expressing gratitude for what you want. Gratitude is the key. You know, the law of attraction basically states that whatever gets in your mind and stays there, you will attract it in your life, that your mind is like a magnet. That's the law of attraction. Well, as believers, we call it Proverbs 23, 7. Whatever a man thinks in his heart, so does he become. In other words, what you think about, you bring about. Well, here's the thing. God will go to work to fight your battles but you have to express gratitude, praise, and thanksgiving. Now, to give you proof, I'll tell you about my weight loss issue, but let me just give you proof about what I'm sharing today. You know, we see the story of Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles. If you remember the story, armies are coming against Jehoshaphat. He was completely outnumbered, and it looked hopeless. There was no way he could win this battle. So what does he do? Well, the Bible says he sent the praisers out ahead of him. They were bowing down and praising God, expressing gratitude for how powerful and mighty he is. And their praise confused the enemy. See, the enemy doesn't know what to do when it does not appear that your breakthrough is ever going to happen and you just start praising and thanking God. It sounds crazy. Well, the Bible says the enemies actually turned against each other (laughs) and slaughtered themselves. Well, listen to what Jehoshaphat did. This was his solution. He said, Lord, I don't know what to do. And even if I did, I don't have the strength to do it. But my eyes are on you. And he just began praising and worshiping God. And then he said, oh, yeah, and the armies are coming against me. Well, listen to what the Lord said. He said to him, the battle is the Lord's. The victory is yours. And he won the battle. Now, think about it. Jehoshaphat's position was, don't worry about it. Just keep my eyes on God. Now get this ingrained. When you complain, no matter what it is, when you complain, you remain. When you praise, you make progress. Now let me explain how I discovered personally that one of the ways that we maintain our less than desired bodies is through the words of our mouths. Now complaining and constantly focusing on the negative things that we hate about ourselves, it causes us to remain that way. When we're saying things like, I hate my thighs. My stomach is huge. I'll never get this weight off. No matter what I do, I can't lose weight. This cellulite is disgusting. (laughs) Well, what we focus on expands. Now, personally, I experienced a major change in my body years ago when I reached a milestone, when I turned 40. Well, suddenly, I began to look in the mirror and hate what I saw. My thighs, my hips, my waist, my face, everything. And increasingly, I began to gain weight. And I just, I hated looking in the mirror. I hated what I saw. I was so discouraged over my lack of ability to look like my old self. Well, strangely enough, I was eating healthier than ever and working out harder, but looking worse than ever. And I was convincing myself that no matter what I try, it's not working. Well, keep in mind, those are debilitating thoughts. And so the more I believed it and expressed it, the more it became my reality. Well, finally, I began to get control of myself, my thoughts, my words, my attitude. And what I did was I got a vision board. Number one, I got a vision. Now, remember this. Don't complain about something you don't have a vision to change. In fact, we see in the Bible when Habakkuk complained to the Lord, his response was, write the vision. So I did that. I found a photo of myself at my ideal weight wearing a swimsuit. Nobody else saw this but me. I put it on my vision board that nobody saw, and I began looking at it every single day. And in prayer, I would literally close my eyes and imagine myself looking like that again. I mean, literally, I would visualize my thin thighs, my trim waist, my flat stomach, my slender face, everything. And I wrote out clearly my vision. I said, I am so happy weighing my perfect weight. And I wrote what I wanted to weigh, which I'm not telling you. (laughs) Then like Jehoshaphat, 
I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. I'm doing all I know to do. I don't even have the strength to do anymore, but my eyes are on you. Now remember, the battle is the Lord's, the victory is yours. And I just started praising God just like Jehoshaphat did. I began thanking the Lord for His promises to me in the Word of God. And I actually listed promises and declarations. And I would say things like, Thank you, Lord, according to your word, you said the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. And I said, thank you for delivering me from torment over my body. Then I said this, in the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. I am free from anxiety over my body. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then this scripture, your grace is sufficient for me. I have the grace to weigh what I want to weigh. Now remember, grace means the power of God coming on you to do with ease what you could never do on your own. Then I said this one, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which I please. Well, then I made a list of positive declarations. I started saying things like, I am grateful for my fast metabolism. I'm grateful that I am in the best physical shape of my life. I'm grateful that I can eat whatever I want to eat and maintain my perfect weight. I'm grateful that I'm free from food and bondage to food. I'm free from torment over my body. I'm happy with my body. I'm healthy and in excellent shape. I'm thin, firm, muscular. I mean, I made this list. I've got them right here. I said, I'm disciplined and full of energy. I enjoy working out. I'm telling you, the weight began falling off of me. That is what the Lord said, though. He said, the battle is the Lord's. The victory is ours. The struggle was over. So how can you apply the law of attraction to your weight loss? First, start by deciding what you want to look like. If you have a photo of yourself when you looked your best, then that's the image you want to keep before your eyes. If you don't, Find a picture of your ideal body, chop somebody's head off, put your head on top, figuratively speaking. Number two, guard your mouth. What goes in your mouth isn't nearly as important as what's coming out of your mouth. Overeating is not nearly as detrimental to your weight goal as complaints are. Determined to not let one negative word come out of your mouth again about your body again. Now I'm telling you, I know it's not easy. We all have that tendency to look in the mirror and just start to feel disgusted. Don't voice it. Your words are powerful and they have a way of keeping you trapped into the very thing you don't want. Number three, trade all those complaints for praise and thanksgiving, for where you're headed. See, you're giving God something to work with. He responds to a grateful heart. He loves to hear your faith expressed through gratitude. So I'm telling you, all the weight loss books, the fitness equipment, they won't change a thing until you first guard your words. And just like Jehoshaphat, say, Lord, I don't know what to do. Even if I did, I don't have the strength to do it, but my eyes are on you. And then say, oh yeah, thanks for taking care of this fitness issue. So I hope you enjoyed that. Real quick, I wanna mention our YouTube subscriber of the week is Doyen. These names sometimes are so hard for me. Okay, this one is Oloran Femi. Doyen Oloran Femi. It's just a common name, but (laughs) this is what Doran wrote. Thanks, Ms. Terry. I heard you talk about this and started in 2017 practicing this hour of power. And it has been my most purposeful year so far. I love that. I published three books and did a tour of schools and organizations where I spoke to 1,000 girls and gave them copies of my book. This is amazing. Having that power hour clarifies the goal, frees the clutter in the mind, and fuels you to go for it. I believe that. Thank you for always speaking the truth to us in love. Love, Doyen. That is amazing. See, I love getting reports that you are truly living your dreams. And I'm cheering you on. Thank you, Doyen, for sharing that with me. And I'm sorry I jacked up your name. But bottom line is this. When you complain, you remain. I have found that it is so easy for us to complain without even realizing we're doing it. So I have provided for you a free downloadable PDF that will help you consciously be grateful. And I even have challenges in there for you to text like three people that you're thankful for and just tell them how much you appreciate them. Now it's been proven that you will feel better about yourself after doing that than they even will. Now, I truly believe gratitude is going to open doors for you that no man can shut, which is why I want you to download this and apply it today. So just click the link in the description to download your gratitude challenge right now. And for more consistent motivation, be sure to follow me 
on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And click that little subscribe button right there to get consistent teaching to live your dreams. And again, I want to remind you, I'm cheering you on. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.